We are pleased, as always, to be bringing you coverage of the National Football League on EA Sports. Today, we reach Week 15, and we've got a good matchup in store between the New York Jets and the Los Angeles Rams. And off we go from SoFi Stadium. Taken about seven yards deep. And he'll be stopped right around where he would have been had he gone down to a knee, maybe a yard shy of there at the 24. Play clock down to two, and we get a signal and a timeout. They'll have two remaining as we step aside here in this first quarter. Here's the first carry for Ezekiel Elliott. And he'll take this one up close to the 25-yard line. Only a couple for him there on the game's first play, and it's second down. Open man is Komet, the tight end. And he gets this one just shy of the 40. They'll mark him down at the 39. A gain of 13. It's a first down. Play action. It's Newton. You don't always expect tight ends to be big in terms of run after the catch, but after that play, he joins a growing band of players that's putting that stereotype right on its ear. Another nice gain, 16 yards there and a first down again. Now the first carry here for Todd Gurley. And they'll bring him down after just a short pickup. Credit him with a one-yard gain there to make it second and nine. Yeah, things were pretty stacked up there in the middle of the line. A lot of bodies, not much space. I think ultimately, he was fortunate to get anything out of that run. Here's second and nine, just a yard on that last run. <laughs> to throw is Newton. Eluding the pressure right. Looking sideline incomplete. 
He was trying to get it to Ezekiel Elliott, but now it'll be third down. As soon as I saw him break contain and get outside, my first thought and my eyes gravitated downfield because nowadays, most of these quarterbacks, when they do that, they want the big play downfield. They don't want to throw it short. In this case, he took the shot. It fell incomplete. And he's going to be taken down at the 39, clearly short of the first by a few yards. They get only four that time as that leads us to a fourth down. And on their first drive, the offense staying out there. They're going to go for it on fourth. They snap it to Newton. He gets it to Brown, complete. And brought down, but not before they're inside the 25. That one good for 17 yards on fourth. Couldn't ask for much more from your offense there. First down. Here's Newton. Being chased out left. And that's incomplete. They've given up a few first downs on this drive, but getting the incompletion there, that should give them something to build on and maybe turn the tide. So after the incompletion, second and 10 from the 22. Now back to the ground with Elliott. And that one blown up quickly as he's going to be stopped before he could even get started. It's a loss of four. Now third down. They fake the give. Newton sliding out of the pocket. And he will not be able to hang on through the contact. It's incomplete. The coverage strong, and now it's fourth down. Brandon, we saw these defenders flying to the football in their win last week, and nothing has changed. They're still moving around quickly and forcing incompletions. So the opening drive does yield points, maybe not the seven they wanted, but they'll take the three. Accumulating first downs does not go up on the scoreboard, but it does go into the DNA of a team that's trying to establish itself to start a game. That has to feel pretty good for them. They'll take the three. Yeah, they had three first downs and three points. for DeAndre Swift. And he's going to be met at the line of scrimmage and taken down. Give the tackle to Hassan Reddick. Eason on second down. He's going to get that to Swift underneath. And they're able to get this one across the 35. Rookie quarterback, rookie running back. They team up there to pick up the first. Line of scrimmage, the 37 on first and 10. Eason going to throw it out of the shotgun. And he'll be stopped right at midfield. Rookie to rookie on the hook up there, and it's a first down. And he's top five in the league in terms of receiving yardage because of plays like that. What have you seen from him on film that you like so much? Well, I'll strip away everything else and get to what we call the moment of truth. When the ball's arriving and there's a defender there, he just comes down with the ball. He competes and takes it away. Great hands, great ability to finish the catch. Second down, here's Eason. He'll rifle this one deep right side. Devin Duvernay, the intended receiver. And it'll bring up third down. From the gun is Eason. Into heavy traffic, and it's intercepted. Picked up by Delano Hill. And his guys are going to get the football at their own 47-yard line. The rookie was trying to push it downfield, but the safety bit him. And he'll learn that you have to hold the safety. And you do that with your head movement, your eyes, sometimes your shoulders. Hold the safety so that you can get back to the throw that you really want to make. He got so excited thinking his guy was open that he made it easy for the defensive back to go get the football. He'll get that complete to his tight end, Komet. A gain of six there on first. 
So much goes into a successful play, doesn't it? How about that play action there? Freezing the defense just enough to bring the tight end free downfield for the completion. 3-0 after one on EA Sports. On second down, Elliott. They'll get only a couple down to the 44. But not much on that run, Charles. No, that's exactly the way to execute a run blitz there. They guessed correctly that they would move the ball on the ground, honed in on it, and stopped them. Mark that down for a win in the defense's column. They'll try and run for it with Elliott. He's got the first down here inside the 30. And he's going to get this one all the way down to the Rams 11. Well, they only needed a small gain on third down. They end up getting over 30 yards. So how about this for field position after the big play? Inside the 15 now as they come up on first and 10. They'll fake the handoff. Now Newton looking left side and he's got a man. It's Elliott. Nothing at all on that one. It'll be second down. Well, that was a simple throw and catch, but even with that completion, zero yards gained, so they're behind schedule on down and distance. I think they were hoping to get it to him. He could make a man or two miss, but that window closed quickly. Had the completed pass, but for no gain, stopped right at the line, so it's second and ten. And they'll go backwards here, losing yardage to the 14. That's a big loss of three, and it brings up third down. This defense has really flown around in the first half. They've gotten to the ball carrier before they can really get started. Offense got to come up with something else in order to try and get this running game going. Third and long, it's Newton. And a good return here as he takes it up past the 30-yard line. Well, Brandon, there's no question who they're going to look to on third and long, but you can bet this defense knows that as well, so they've got him blanketed downfield. And this ball winds up being intercepted. Set to begin their next drive, the Rams' offense at the line. They trail 3-0 after the INT last time led to a field goal, but now another fresh start here, first and 10. And he'll be limited to a short gain up to about the 34-yard line. The last run good for two. Here's second and eight. This is Swift on the counter. And he slips up past the 45 before being tackled. 15 yards on the play, first down. They went counter there offensively, and a couple of the defenders were on skates for a second. They certainly were. And you know what offensive linemen love about the counters and the misdirections? Sometimes you don't even have to block the defender. He can run himself out of the play if he doesn't read his keys properly. And they'll get him down as he's inside the 40. Another nice gain, 13 yards that time, and another first down. Operating from the gun, Eason. Complete, Jefferson the target. And they're going to be set up down around the 15-yard line. Now the Jets going to use the second of their three timeouts. So as they take it over, we step aside. Line of scrimmage, the 15. It's first and 10. Here's Swift. And he'll get about three just outside the 10, stopped at the 11. The Jets going to go ahead and use their final timeout. And with that, they're now out of timeouts. and still plenty of time remaining here in this second quarter. And he slings one that's incomplete. To this point, I've been impressed with the work defensively. They have not allowed a lot of receivers to run free. And there's another example, another incompletion. To throw on third down. Eason, the quick slant caught. And the Rams are going to have first and goal as they try to finish off this drive with six points. And we'll remind you that coming up at halftime, we'll join Jonathan Coachman and the gang in Orlando. Coach will have stats and scores from the early games going on here around the NFL. 
They'll run with Swift. And he'll get into the end zone. Touchdown, Rams. DeAndre Swift, his fourth touchdown on the year. And the Rams have taken the lead. People always talk about one of his biggest strengths, running the football vision, and he found the spot there, went into the end zone. You're exactly right about that. And it wasn't just the vision, right? Once he saw the gap, decisiveness, made up his mind, and about the power to finish the play. Not only did he get good blocking, he created his own space as well. And he'll be stopped right around where he would have been had he gone down to a knee, maybe a yard shy of there at the 24. Jets offense coming up now to start their next drive. And they had a nice little drive going last time through the interception in the red zone. Costly. Bad enough to throw it anywhere, but that drives coaches insane when they're thinking about, hey, we've got a shot at points already. We're already in a spot where you're thinking you've got three on the board for sure, and to come away with nothing, that's a really tough one for them to swallow. Yeah, will they make up for it? Now the throw here complete on the right sideline. Three yards the gain there, second down. Out of the gun, Newton. This is caught by Antonio Brown. And this is going to be another first down as the tackle is going to be made at the Rams 26. That one goes for 24 yards. A throw left side taken in by Komet. And he's out of bounds. Almost gets to the 10. Another nice gain. 13 yards that time and another first down. Newton throwing again. To the goal line, but it's incomplete. He was looking for his rookie Cole Komet that time. And that'll bring up second down. To throw again. Newton. And that'll be incomplete. Took a pretty good shot as he tried to pull that one in. Couldn't hang on third down. He did a fine job there of not hitting him before the ball arrived. And I've got to tell you, you can often mistime that play because of the angles of approach. When you're going to get him, sometimes you panic as well and think, I've got to be there right now. Instead, in this case, timed it perfectly and knocked it free. Throwing on third down, Newton. And he's going to take it in for a Jets touchdown. A.J. Brown, his third touchdown now on the year. And the Jets are going to retake the lead. That could be an important swing right there, a touchdown of the final minute of the half to take the lead. And I like the point you just made there. Could be an important swing because now that they have the lead, if they can carry that into the locker room at the half, They'll feel really good about what they accomplished in the first two quarters. Morstead out now following the touchdown to kick. And that one will bounce out of the back of the end zone, so we will start here at the 25. Set to begin their next drive, the Rams offense at the line. And you have to figure they won't just sit on the football here in the final minute. The way things have gone, they need to try to make something happen offensively. But maybe they should. Maybe they should sit on it here because of what you just said. They haven't made anything happen offensively. Getting ready to go into the half, give them a chance to take a deep breath, exhale a little bit, and start over. I don't know if this is the time to push it myself. Yeah, right now under 100 yards of total offense. On first down, Jacob Eason. His throw incomplete. He was looking for the rookie, Brandon Ayuk, but it's going to be second down. I think he's got to be careful not to force anything into coverage right there. There weren't really any throwing lanes, but the best part for him, he's got second and third down to fall back on. Ball on the 42 as they come up second and 10. Throwing again. Eason. Flush to his right. They'll find Swift out of the backfield. 
And out of bounds on the other side of midfield at the 45. A gain of 13. It's a first down. They go play action with Eason. Looking for Ayuk, and he's got him. And down to the 20, he'll go before yeah, heading out of bounds. 25 yards that time. Inside the red zone here, they'll look to throw. And that will be incomplete with a clock down now to 13 seconds. After the incompletion, here's second and 10 from the 20. To throw again, Eason. That's complete to Swift out of the backfield. Now a timeout taken. Perhaps a chance for one more quick play and then another timeout if they hurry. We'll see. The second down completion got him seven. Now here's third and three. From the gun, Eason. And this is caught. He's got it. Touchdown, L.A. Justin Jefferson in the final seconds of the first half. And the Rams are once again going to retake the lead. CD for them. This has just been an offensive explosion here in the second quarter. Yeah, held scoreless in the first quarter. Now they find the end zone again here in the second. Sometimes you just have to have some patience. A lot of people think it's always an adjustment. You have to change what you're doing. Sometimes you just have to do your game plan just a little bit better. And I think that's part of what we're seeing here. Jets offense coming up now to start their next drive. And from this spot in the field with the clock where it's at, you think we're just going to see a knee and that's it? And I think in this situation, that's the proper play. But we do know there's some risk takers out there that may want to take one more shot before the clock runs out. So we've reached halftime here in a four-point game as we send you to Orlando to check in with Jonathan Coachman at our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach? And that one will bounce out of the back of the end zone, so we will start here at the 25. Third quarter starts with a run from Swift, and he's upended after a gain of two out to the 27. Making the stop that time, Bobby Wagner. They'll break the huddle, come up on second and eight at the 27-yard line. Eason. That's complete to his receiver, Ayuk. And he's brought down after a very nice gain. But one of the ways the quarterbacks keep all the receivers alive in a play, never lock in on any one guy. Make sure you keep your eyes moving, scan the field. And here he finds the open guy for a nice pickup. Tackle made that time by Dalvin Tomlinson. Brandon, all things considered, they have to feel pretty good about getting that type of a gain considering the blitz that they just had against them. To throw on second down, Eason. And Braith, the tight end's got it. A one-yard gain there following the three-yard pickup on first down. That was a nice throw out there to the flat, but they defended that pretty well. The hope is to go ahead and put it on him so he can turn and get upfield and gain additional yardage. It just wasn't anywhere to go on that play. That'll be complete to Cook. And they'll get him down about three yards short of the first. They stop him for only three that time, and that'll bring up fourth down. He wasn't the primary target, but I think it was almost like a, a check down situation, wasn't it? Yeah, like hoping he can break some tackles, a big tight end, but he couldn't do yeah, it. Yeah, get it to that big frame and hope he can scatter some bodies, unable to get it done. Watch out, watch out, watch out. They'll try it now with Swift. And he gets it to the 34, good enough for the first. 
Give them credit. They knew what they wanted to dial up on fourth. They executed it for nine yards, and the offense stays out there. The fourth down run successful. Now they look to pay it off on first down. Rolling to his right. And seeing no options, he just tosses this one away incomplete. Now that'll bring up second down. Got out of the pocket. Didn't look like he had anybody open, Charles, so just gets rid of it. And a good play by him. If no one's open and you don't have a running lane that you want to take, make the right choice, get rid of it, live to fight another down. And he's going to get this down close to a first at about the Jets' 24. Nine yards, not quite enough, and they'll be left now with third and one. Open man is Duvernay. And brought down, but not before they get it inside the 10 to the 7. He was held without a catch in the first half, but he's got one here, and he also picks up a first down. Here's Swift. And he's going to take this one in for a Rams touchdown. DeAndre Swift with his second touchdown of the game and fifth on the year. And the Rams tack on to their advantage. Circle that drive because that might be one to remember. Well executed to give him a little cushion. Well, let's take it into the boxing ring. You talk about them commanding it, keeping the fight where they wanted to, whether it was in the center of the ring or putting them on the ropes because it was jab, jab, jab. And finally, the haymaker to put that drive away. Extra point try, good by Gano. And that makes it a 21-10 game. Gano now following the touchdown here to kick it away. Fielded in the end zone. And they'll get him down right around the 25, actually the 26 officially, so a net gain of one there. Jets offense coming up now to start their next drive. They'll look to make some inroads here, trailing 21 to 10 as they come up on a first and 10. Now a play fake, and it's Newton. Open man is Komet, the tight end. And he's going to be out of bounds right at midfield. Call that a very strong gain of 24. From the 50, Newton. And the Rams got him. They bring him down. Chase Young make that now eight sacks for him on the season. After the sack on first down, Newton escaping the pressure right. And this one taken in on the right sideline, but not in the field of play. They say it's incomplete. The throw led him a little too far. It brings up third down. This offense in desperate need of a conversion as they come up on third down. A shotgun snap for Newton. He gets it to Brown. Complete. Third and 19. No problem as they're able to convert. Now Newton on first down. Flushed out right. Pass incomplete. Well, defensively, they haven't let him just sit in the pocket and get comfortable, and that's opposite a lot of game plans in today's NFL. Ordinarily, you're trying to keep the quarterback hemmed in. In this case, they brought the heat, and if he flushes out, they're fine with that, and they force another incompletion. Second and 10, Newton again. Quick slant to Brown. And this is going to be another first down as the tackle's going to be made at the Rams' 20-yard line. The Jet passing game in rhythm. They've got another first. They'll roll him out right. He'll try and run it. The improv on the scramble there gets him six, and it'll be second down. We're off to the fourth quarter here in Week 15. Happy holidays to all. We'll return with more after this. This is the NFL, and it's on EA Sports. Four yards remain for second down. Out of the gun, it's Elliott. 
And so close, he gets it to the one. Out of bounds right there. A solid pickup of 12 yards, and now they're knocking on the door. I tell you, they didn't give it to him much through the first three quarters, but when they have, he's been efficient. Maybe they ride him more here down the stretch. Yeah, I'm not sure it was actually in the game plan for him to have as few carries as he has, but it might play out really well for them now. As you noted, if they want to ride him down the stretch, he should have fresh legs. A lot of times it's that first read that you have. Maybe you get it in pre-snap, and he locked in on his target, but he was covered quite well. And, that was and he'll get in. He's over for the touchdown. Cam Newton keeping it himself from a yard out. And the Jets are able to make this a close game again. So it was second and goal, still had a couple of downs to work with. They tried to sneak, and they got in. I like the idea that they did it early in the down and distance count. Second down as opposed to waiting later on. I think it fooled them a little bit, but how about the push they got up front to get the quarterback through? Big push and a touchdown to boot. And this one incomplete. So they went for the two. They don't get it. So unable to throw it in for two from the two. Let me ask you, as a former DB, what changes there around the goal line on a two-point conversion as far as how you're defending it? You just make sure you never back up and you never retreat. You establish yourself really on the line of scrimmage, put your heels on the goal line at worst, and if they're going to throw the ball, make them throw it over your head because they're going to run out of space because of the back of the end zone. Never let a guy catch one in front of you. Set to begin their next drive, the Rams offense at the line. And that last touchdown drive, a good mix of pass and run. Defensively, they just looked a little out of whack. And it's so hard to stay up with an offense that has things going so well where you're guessing and guessing wrong play after play. So what you need is someone on the defensive side of the hey, ball leader, right? to make a big play. Yeah. Throw that balance out of whack. That's what you're looking for now. Not worrying so much about guessing what the play call is. Tackle made by Delano Hill. They'll stay on the ground with Swift. And he is going to be stopped cold behind the line of scrimmage. Now they're staring at a third and eight. That last play backwards a yard. Now, obviously, that's some good work there defensively, being able to stop them and bring up a key third down. But if you're on the offensive side of the ball, there's an opportunity because I know what defensive guys are thinking right now. Just stop them, get to the ball. That means they might not be sound defensively. There could be some opportunities. And you said key third down. Highlight that word. Put it in bold. Here we go. So they elect to decline it. And why not? Just go ahead and let the play stand, and they'll take that. They'll run the draw here with Swift. They'll fight forward for a couple down inside the 40. When we talk about defenders, specifically linebackers, keeping their eyes in the right spot. He had that eye down the entire time. And you know that's not easily done because they throw a lot of misdirection at you. They try and fool you and get your eyes in the wrong place. But you're right about that one. He correctly figured that one out and made a really nice play. Well, they're unable to convert that into much, but it's never a bad idea to try to get the ball into a tight end of his caliber's hands and see what kind of disruption he can cause. He's going to get that to Swift underneath. It's a gain of 11 and a first down L.A. Couldn't just sit on it here, could they? Had to throw the ball on third down. Got the big completion in the pickup. Fresh set of downs now. They've got to feel great. And defensively a backbreaker. On first and ten, it's Swift. And I think this defense knew what was coming as he is smothered behind the line. And now, defensively, they're going to burn their first time out. Remember, they get an extra time built in coming up here shortly at the two-minute warning. That loss of three, a rare stumble on a promising drive. Here's second and 13. Once again, it's Swift. And only a yard this time as he's taken down right around the 26. And this defense here going to burn their second timeout. But you can also factor in another timeout that they'll get when the clock stops at the two-minute warning. On third down, Eason. He'll drop this one off to Swift. And he's going to be marked down short of the first down right around the 17. A short game that doesn't get them the first down brings up a fourth down situation. Really nice job defensively. They knew where the sticks were. They got the stop before it.
So it's Rams football here as we get you reset. They're looking at a fourth down now as they try to hold on to this lead for dear life. And the 11-year veteran bangs it through. And that'll push the lead up to eight. Now from a defensive perspective, though, I think maybe they're saying, hey, we did what we needed to do, kept this a one-score game. Yeah, without a doubt, because they were able to bleed some time off the clock, right? Put themselves in a good position, but it's not out of reach yet, okay? Being able to hold them to a field goal means that they do have a chance to come back and win this game. Jets offense coming up now to start their next drive. He'll look to throw. He'll get that complete to his tight end, Komet. And he's brought down, getting this one up to about the 35. Give him 10 yards there, and about by the nose of the football, he's going to have a first down. Now a desperate, and that's caught inside the 30. And he is out of bounds, but not before he's inside the 30. They give him a gain of 38. So now then, the big play has him all the way inside the 30 now, first and 10. Play action, it's Newton. And that's going to be incomplete. Not only did he have a chance to scan the field there, it felt like he had a chance to scan it twice. The protection was that good. Unfortunately for him, the coverage downfield, equally good. Second and 10 now from the 27. He's back to throw. Eluding the pressure right. And his throw here is incomplete. They certainly did a nice job improvising there, extending the play, hoping someone would come open downfield, but they never did. An important play right here, third and ten. And I would expect pressure here. That is caught right at the ten-yard line. And down he goes, taking it inside the ten, just shy of the five at the six. Nice job there of utilizing his big target. He didn't overthink it. Understands the catch radius. Understands that he knows how to use his body to keep defenders away from the ball. And puts it right out there for the nice pickup. Flush to his right. And he gets halfway there from the six to the three on a gain of three. So the ball position now at the three. Here's second and goal. Now it's Newton. Escaping the pressure right. Toward the end zone, but that's going to wind up incomplete. I see you nodding your head up and down. That's a very heady decision at this stage of the game. Out of the pocket, nowhere to go. Just get rid of it. That's a smart play because you're not worried about your completion percentage, and you're also not trying to force it into bad traffic as well. Throw the ball away, live to fight another down. Now Newton. And this will be caught. Touchdown. So in the final minute here, now a two-point conversion will tie the game. So they got the touchdown they needed to cut this to two, but now they've got to get back to the huddle. No celebration time. Got to figure out what they're going to do on the two-point conversion. Big play coming now for the Jets as they'll set up to go for two. Newton to throw. Flushed out right. And no, it falls incomplete. So the two-point conversion, no good. And the failure to convert and tie the game, now the pressure shifts back to the defense. But I think it was the right play. I think it was the right call to try and tie the game there. Kick an extra point, you're still down one. What's the sense? I, I like what they did. Morstead out now following the touchdown to kick. An incredibly short kick fielded way up there. Now a crease here as he's past the 30. Down to a knee goes Eason, and that should just about do it. Listen, anytime you take a knee to end a game, that means you've won it. So it doesn't matter whether it's home or on the road, but there's something a little extra special about doing it in front of your home crowd, isn't there? And the home crowd applauding. They're happy with what they've seen. Chalk this one up in the left-hand column for a win. Yeah, that's right. Head to the locker room, throw the wristbands in the crowd for the kids, your gloves, your towels. Get to share it with the home team.
Well, as always, partner, an extreme pleasure to share a booth with you. I, I, I have to say, I am impressed at your discipline because you came here and you said you were not going to eat any of the media buffet. <laughs> you made it to the end. You didn't consume a single calorie. I appreciate that. What you missed is me going to the concession stand outside <laughs> of your...
today from Seattle, Washington. It's week 16 of the NFL on EA Sports. With the beautiful Puget Sound just to our west, you get a look inside Lumen Field here in Seattle, Washington. Today, it's an NFC West battle between the Los Angeles Rams and the Seattle Seahawks. And they will not get a chance to return this one as it's through the end zone for a touchback. So out come the Seahawks now for their first possession. Leading them out, the man known as Danny Dimes, their second-year quarterback from Duke, Daniel Jones. Coming off of a loss their last time out, I think he's just seeking to make a bigger impact on the game. He threw a touchdown pass, didn't throw an interception. I think he just wants to jump those numbers up in terms of flinging it around and letting his receivers get into the end zone. From the 27, Jones. And on the left sideline, he caught it, but out of bounds, according to the headlinesman. Incomplete, so the ball a little late getting there, and it's third down. An early tough test on the opening drive. This is third and eight. Operating from the gun, Jones. That's caught by Hollister. And he's going to come up a bit short. He needed to get to the 35 for the first, but he only makes it to the 34. Obviously, they didn't get everything they wanted on that completion, but they put themselves in a spot where you've got to at least think about going for it. I know where we are on the field, but still, you've got to think about it, don't you? As Sanchez on to punt here as he sends this one away. We'll call that a 49-yard punt with a return of just two. And the offense will take over with a new set of downs. So the ball down to the 16 here for first and 10. Eason going to throw it out of the shotgun. And he's got his man out of the backfield. That's complete. And this will leave him a yard short. Nice pickup of nine yards on first down. That last catch short of the marker by just a yard leaves him with a very manageable second and one. Eluding the pressure right. And seeing nowhere to throw, he chucks this one away from harm. Incomplete. Now it's third down. They tried to throw on second down, unsuccessful. Now it's third and one. Oh, I like that right there. Not only was it the right play, throwing it away like that, frankly, I think it was the only play. He's got a man complete. And he'll get into the end zone. Touchdown, Rams. Devin Duvernay with touchdown number seven on the year. And the Rams are going to take a first quarter lead. It's up, it's good, and the Rams take a 7-0 lead. Both sides of the football in sync early. You force the three and out, and then you take it down, score points. You know what that tells me? They sold their game plan really well. Head coach said, listen, we're just going to stop them on three and out. We're going to take the ball downfield and score. But he also told them how it was going to happen. They're going to run this. We're going to stuff it. Then we're going to take the ball. They won't be able to keep up with us. And they got it done. Seattle's offense coming back onto the field, ready for their second drive. You know, in our research packet this week, prepping for the game, so many articles from the local beat writer about the offensive struggles of this team and what will they do this offseason? What do you think they'll do? Well, number one, they'll turn to their self-scouting report. And every team that's any good does this. They have outside groups check out their team, scout them, and tell you who can play, who can't play, and reasons why. Some of it may just be health. They have to get some guys healthy and back out on the field. But overall, evaluate this squad and make the changes that you need to. Now this one to his tight end out on the right side. Not a big window to throw. Coverage wasn't too bad there. Yeah, they had him under wraps pretty well, but somehow able to muscle his way open and catch the ball. Now Jones. Open man is Metcalf. He's got it. And he will have a first down here at about the 40. A strong eight yards will keep this drive rolling. 
We've seen quite a bit of the short passing game here early on first quarter, haven't we? We have, and I think it works a couple of ways for, for this team because, number one, you throw the short game until they stop it. And if they're not going to stop it, you keep throwing it. And... Rush coming, and he's taken down. I spent a lot of extra time preparing for this game watching this offensive line because they gave up five sacks last week in their loss. They just gave up another one now. They don't seem to be working together as a cohesive unit. Right? Four guys might have it right, but the fifth guy is giving something up. They've got to find a way to all get on the same page. And he went backwards. He'll be down at the 30. Oh, partner, when you see a screen pass and the defensive tackle ends up making the play, you know that one wasn't sold well at all because he should be upfield by the time you throw the pass. And down he goes on the pressure from the Rams defense. Chase Young in there to get him, and on the season now, that is nine sacks for him. Well, this is what happens when you get behind the chains, as people like to say, when you have obvious passing situations, hard to vary it up and fool a defense. And you hate those situations if you're an O-lineman, right? Oh, without a doubt, because you just know they're coming, and you never know exactly how. They can be exotic in their blitzes, or their athletic ability just takes over. Set to begin their next drive, the Rams offense at the line. And they'll be looking to make this a two-score advantage. Had the touchdown on their first drive, Charles. Hey, they can get up two scores here on the road. That's a heck of a start. And not only have they thought about it, I wonder if they visualized it. I remember playing, and they used to turn the lights out in our meeting room and run through a situation like this and say, just think about what it would be like to be up on the road and take the crowd out of it. Maybe they did some of that. They'll throw on first down with Eason. He's going to fire this thing deep right sideline. Devin Duvernay, the intended receiver. And it's second down. You can't block me. You can't block me. You can't block me. Hey, check by 39. Check. Throwing again. Eason. That's taken in by Duvernay. And that'll wind up moving the chains again as the tackle's going to be made at the Seahawks' 38-yard line. A gain there of 21 yards. After one, 7 nothing on EA Sports. So from Seahawk territory now, it's first and 10 at the 38. Now Eason. Oh, hit as he throws there, incomplete. He was trying to find Justin Jefferson there, but it'll be second down. To throw again, Eason. Looking for Ayuk, and he's got him. Touchdown, L.A. Brandon Ayuk with touchdown number 12 on the year. And the Rams add on to their lead. It's not much as perfect in football, but that's about as close to it as you're going to get. Score, force a punt, score again. And both drives were impressive. The opening drive was, that last one was. Now on the other side, though, what's your psyche? You're really behind the eight ball. You gotta make sure to just hold in there. Survive the early storm, relax a little bit, and try and get back to your game plan. It's way too early for panic. Fielded a couple yards into the end zone. And they'll get him down right around the 25, actually the 26 officially, so a net gain of one there. Out comes the Seattle offense. We take a peek at the playoff race coming into the weekend in the NFC. And with a final fortnight of games upon us, teams jockeying for position. Some of these games really starting to take enormous importance as they always do this time of year. I like how you use fortnight. Hey, you're impressed, aren't you? I am impressed. That Thank means you. two weeks, if that, I'm not mistaken, does. correct? That does. But how about exactly what you're talking about? Going down the stretch, how much importance is placed on these games? Look, everyone talks about every game's important. <laughs> when you get to this time of year, maybe that importance gets quadrupled. And that's where we are right now to see who can make their last run, their last push to get into the playoffs. It's a first down on a gain of 10. Throwing Jones. He's going to go for a big play downfield. This is caught inside the 15. It's a big play there for Seattle. 45 yards. 
for an offense that has not found the end zone yet, that's a big play. There's the spark right there. The big play that they needed. Now they've got to go ahead and finish this drive and put this ball in the end zone. And he's brought down. Back-to-back -back nice gains. That one for 14 yards and another first. Yeah, they really needed to get something going, didn't they? They had punted on the last two possessions. The running game starting to come to the front for them, providing a nice pickup there to keep this drive going. They'll run for it with Tariq Cohen. And he will score. Touchdown, Seattle. Tariq Cohen with touchdown number seven on the year. And the Seahawks able to make this a close game again. That almost looked too easy, and I think thanks goes to the offensive line for making it look easy. Yeah, I agree with you totally on that one. I'm not sure how much everyone understands the preparations that go into a game for an offensive line because there's a reason that running backs and quarterbacks give them big gifts at the end of the season after a big year. The consistency and the continuity it takes to know each other and execute their blocks is pretty impressive. They'll run with a former Bulldog. It's the rookie DeAndre Swift. And he's upended after a gain of two out to the 27. On second down, Swift. I know that speed is the hallmark of today's NFL game, but the key to good rushing defense is still having your linebackers set the edge. To throw on third down, Eason. And they will touch him down, but not before he gets the first. Great way to convert on third down there. 21 yards the play. They'll run on first down. Swift. And yeah, they string that play out nicely. He stopped before he can turn up field. No gain, second down. We've hit the two-minute mark of the second quarter. 14 to 7. Coming up at halftime, I'll go from one personality, that's you, Charles Davis, to another one in Orlando, the coach. He'll have stats and scores from around the NFL. You and Jonathan Coachman, both larger than life. No doubt about it. But you're stuck with me in this booth. <laughs> yes, And he's I am. miles away and smiling. And happy. One thing you're hoping for when you run drag routes, you're able to hit a receiver in stride, and he can pick up a lot of yardage after the catch. But in this situation... The defense was effective, able to stop him before he could get a good head of steam going. Line of scrimmage, the 37 on first and 10. Back to the running game with Swift. And he'll be taken down at the 34. A gain of three, second down. Good job there keeping him to a short gain. Of course, he's coming off a really terrific performance, reigning NFC Defensive Player of the Week. And I know people get caught up in, well, if you're the reigning Defensive Player of the Week, hey, you must have made a bunch of spectacular plays. Like you mixed in a few of those, but most of the plays are just like we saw there. Keep them to short gains, make the fundamental tackle. He'll get this off to Swift. And he is going to have a Rams first down as that'll be a pickup of about five as they convert on third and inches. Throwing is Eason. And this is caught at the eight. And he will reach the eight-yard line before going out. Rookie to rookie on the hook up there, and it's a first down. And with that completion, he's now north of 200 yards here in the first half. Boy, a tough start for the secondary defensively. It is, and it's got to put a dent in their confidence. And, you know, you always want to keep that up and feel like you can always bounce back after plays. But with the kind of numbers he's putting up here, it's starting to wear on them a little bit, I think. So they're looking at each other and trying to figure out what defense will work and how can they play better without getting beat deep for big passes. Second down, here's Eason. And it's complete. He's got it in the end zone. Touchdown, Rams. Devin Duvernay as the first half is winding down. And the Rams add on to their lead. 
So simple math here in the first half. They've had three drives offensively, and they have scored every time, and they've got the lead. Well, whenever we talk about adjustments, we usually talk about an offense making adjustments, right? This is all about the defense. They've got to figure out some way, somehow, to slow them down. Do they blitz a little bit more? Do they play more zone coverage? Right now, they don't know where to go because they're hitting them in every direction. Here's the Seattle offense ready to get this drive underway. Uh, we're under 20 seconds to go in the half. I'm guessing the wise play here is be safe. That is the wise play because if you think about trying to fool them here, here's what you're facing. You're facing a loosened up secondary playing a lot deeper than normal. So even if you run some type of misdirection, you're only going to fool them for a second or so. And guess what? They're so deep, they're really not going to be out of position. Take the knee, get to the locker room. There you have it. Halftime quickly over. Third quarter, here we go. Fielded just outside the goal line. First and ten, Eason. And he just gets rid of it, throws it away. The wise move there looked like nobody open. Now second down. Oh, that's got to frustrate him a little bit because they nearly got to him there, and it would have been the first sack of the game instead. to able to influence the release, and they did force the incomplete pass. Throwing again on second and ten. Eason, and he'll be hit as he releases it. And that'll fall incomplete. He was trying to find Justin Jefferson there. And it's third down. From the gun is Eason. And he finds Cook. And he is going to have a Rams first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. A gain there of 12 yards and a first down L.A. From the gun, here's Swift. And unable to get downhill there as he'll take this up to about the 37. Give him a couple on the carry there. Second and eight. They'll keep it on the ground. Swift. Now third down is looming. A pickup of two on first down and just one yard there. Sometimes with the running game, you've just got to stick with it. Look, it's the third quarter. No time to panic. But that also doesn't mean you just do it the same way you've been doing it the entire... In a double coverage and it's intercepted. Picked by the rookie linebacker, Kenneth Murray. And he's able to get it back to the 41-yard line. Pretty much everything went their way offensively in the first half, but now an interception on the opening drive of the third quarter. As we know, the key to everything here, don't get careless with the football. The problem is you've got to stay aggressive as well. So where's the line between being aggressive and attacking and being overly aggressive? I think they just crossed it on that one. Ten yards there to start the drive and just enough by about the length of the football for a first down. From the gun, Jones. This pass complete to Higgins. And inside the 20 before he's brought down. 11 yards there and a first down for Seattle. Operating from the gun, Jones. Quick hitter here, it's complete. And able to break one tackle, but then quickly brought down. But a nice little gain. Eight more yards this time coming off back-to-back -back first down pickups. Facing a second and two after that last catch. Good for eight yards. Out of the gun, running with Cohen. And he'll be dropped at about the 11 after only a yard. Now keep in mind, if you're thinking of staying on the ground, this is a top-five rush defense. Yeah, but I don't think you shy away totally with the run. At least show them the hint of a run before you decide to throw the football. And he will have the first down inside the 10 to the 9-yard line. I like this focus there because he wasn't thinking about breaking that one big. All he thought about was, I need one. Let's go get that. Ended up picking up two. They'll try and run for it on first and goal. And the Seahawks are going to have a first and goal forthcoming as he takes this down to about the five-yard line. When you look at the geography we're staring at, this part of the field, 
don't you always think of big backs carrying the football, bruisers trying to pound it in? Instead, we're looking a little more of a scat back type, and he's trying to make it happen. Yeah, they went with the elusive, slippery guy. Couldn't get in there, though. The intended receiver was DK Metcalf, but now it's third and goal. From the gun, Jones to the goal line, but it's incomplete. They certainly had good starting field position on that drive, but couldn't do anything with it after three plays. Have to admit that that's a disappointing end to excellent field position. When that drive started, they had six points that they were thinking about. A good drive gets them inside the five, but they could not punch it in. And credit the defense, too. Make sure that that happens because that was the old bend but don't break approach. Made sure they contained them when they absolutely had to and forced the field goal attempt that went through. Set to begin their next drive, the Rams offense at the line. And they've got the lead here getting late into the third quarter. And the passing game for them, it's been terrific. We've seen that, but the rushing game, almost non-existent. And with the lead and trying to finish this game off, they need the running game to come back to life. They need to get sparked that way, take some time off the clock, and keep the ball away from their opponents. He rifles one that's intercepted. Picked off by the rookie Isaiah Simmons. <laughs> Defensively that time, they were in zone coverage. As a rookie QB, what lesson can you learn there? Well, understand this. You saw zone in college, and the defensive backs reacted, but they don't react like they do on this level. So when they're in zone and they see the ball coming to them, they'll react at least a half a second faster. You've got to know where you want to go with the ball and be decisive with it. Otherwise, the end result can be something you don't like. And that is going to do it for this third quarter of action. We'll return with more after this. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. From the 16, Jones. Looking left side, it's complete. He's got it. And he's brought down just outside of the 10 at the 11. Four yards the pick up, first down. They'll run it here with Bernard. And he's going to work this one down to about the five. A solid run on first down. Gain of seven. Leaves him with a second and three. Let go, defense. Let go, defense. Operating from the gun. Jones to the end zone, but it's incomplete. That one doesn't find its target, but all in all, he's been much sharper this week. He was under 50% a week ago, and now he's up over 70%. Well, you know it's standard for quarterbacks and receivers to get together for a little extra time each and every day in practice. I get the sense they got together for a lot of... End zone caught. Touchdown, Seattle. Rashard Higgins. His third touchdown now on the year. And the Seahawks capitalize on the short field as they take it in for six. A nice throw there by the second-year quarterback. And I don't believe that's the kind of... Play. And they're going to get him. He's sacked back at the 10. So tried to throw it in for two points, but the D got home, brought him down. Yeah, got home, which means there had to be good coverage. Just had nowhere to go with the ball. Typically, you try and throw quick hitters, quick slants, you know, maybe even a quick fade. Nothing was open. He ends up getting sacked. As the Rams offense comes back out, here is the NFC playoff picture coming into the weekend. And it's a good news, bad news proposition for them. Mostly good news, and that's that they've clinched a playoff spot. That's the important thing. Bad news, though, if they want to make a Super Bowl, for the moment at least, they'd have to do it out of the sixth seed. And bottom line, everybody wants to play at home during the playoffs. We know that's a given. But nothing builds character for a ball club quite like winning on the road in the playoffs especially when no one thinks you can do it. And if you win one and gain confidence, who knows, you might get on one of those magical runs. Devin Duvernay, the intended receiver. And now it's third down. Here's Eason to throw. 
And that will be incomplete. So many times when we talk about coverage, we're just about a defender running with a receiver, but a big part of it is understanding where the football is, finding it. In this case, when it arrived, it wasn't a surprise, and he was able to bat it away. 51 yards on the punt there, and it'll be Seahawk football first and 10. The Seahawks again now ready to take over on offense. Their defense accomplished step one of the mission. They forced the punt. Now they'll look to erase that deficit and take a fourth quarter lead. Jones operating from the gun. He'll find Metcalf. Seven yards, the pick up there. Now after the completion, we're going to get a timeout, an injured player. Able to get seven on that first down pass play, second and three. And how might this affect him for the playoffs? We'll get a report when we come back. Now here's a throw right side taken in by his tight end. That one, a first down pickup of eight. That's a staple of this offense, drag route to the tight end. Yeah, he's unable to use his size to break off much more yardage after the catch, but still an effective gain nonetheless. Here's Jones on first and 10. Open man is Higgins. A gain of six there on first. I know many people like to throw to the tight end, maybe in a little flexed out position because he creates mismatches with his size. But slot receivers do the same thing with their quickness, their speed, and their route running savvy. And the Rams got him. They bring him down. Mike Purcell. Busting through to get him for a loss of six. Possibly a turning point. Big play coming. This is third and long. Going for Metcalf on the deep ball. And, oh, a crusher there as it's intercepted. Jalen Thompson picks it. And a great return as he takes this up just shy of the 45. Well, CD, I know it's just his second year in the league as a quarterback, but that's going to be one when he flips on the tape. He's like, ah, I shouldn't have thrown that ball. No doubt about it, and his coaching staff will be emphatic about he shouldn't have thrown that ball. But remember, second year, as you noted, on the job training so he's got to take this feedback that he's getting negative or otherwise and turn it into positives moving forward so it's rams football here as we get your reset following the pickup of four here's second and six from the gun eason open man is duvernay so fresh out of the two-minute warning and here's another timeout taken with 155 remaining not totally home free yet, but it's looking good as they come up first and 10. They run the counter. Swift. And he went nowhere. Well, he went backwards. Back to the 33. And now we're going to get a timeout defensively. So another stop. 150 left in the football game. You'd have to think likely another running play coming here. Second and 11. Now it looks like he'll throw here. Got a man and he hits him in stride. Now the Seahawks forced to use their third and final timeout, and they'll be disappointed to have to burn one there after giving up the first down. Inside the red zone here, they'll look to throw. Flush to his right. He's going to take off with it. He'll get five out of the scramble. It's second down. They brought the blitz that time, and I thought they were going to get to him, but instead, he flipped it on its ear and ended up picking up positive yardage. I thought he was dead to rights, but you are exactly correct, sir. Able to turn that into a positive game. And he'll be taken down here at about the 11. It'll be a pickup of a couple, and it leaves him with a third and three. Operating from the gun, Eason. And he fires one, but incomplete. They really had a good drive going there, but a nice recovery by the defense these past few downs, able to knock that one away on third down and bring up what I think for the offense, an unexpected fourth down here. Now they go for it on fourth, but this one is going to wind up incomplete. No luck for the Rams as they fail here on fourth down. And the Seahawks are going to take over the football. So a top pill to swallow there, a would-be touchdown pass in and out of his hands on fourth. Sometimes it just comes down to execution, doesn't it? Because we're all And he can't get a throw away. He's taken down. 
Chase Young in there to drop him as that clock continues to run. Throwing the out route incomplete. It's Higgins. And he's going to be out of bounds up past the five. Six yards is the pickup, and that'll lead to a third down. Back to throw. And that is incomplete. Seven seconds remaining. And down by five. They've got to go for it here on fourth down. Back to throw. And that is incomplete. Two seconds left on the clock. They had to go for it with such little time remaining. And now, boy, the ball's going to go over on downs here inside the 10-yard line. So the L.A. Rams with a victory here. And it was a bit of a strange game. They were held scoreless through the entire second half. But their first half output, that's enough to carry them to victory. And that's an odd game to watch, isn't it? Because when we saw the output in the first half, you think to yourself, okay, they've got something working here. They know what they're doing. They'll continue that along. But instead, it's goose eggs in the second half. Fortunately, enough of a cushion and enough defense to carry them home. So for Los Angeles, it's a big win here as they move to 11-4 and four now in the year. And they'll get another road test next week as they head to Arizona to take on the Cardinals. Meanwhile, for Seattle, it's another loss as they now fall to 4-11. and 11. And they'll try to get back to their winning ways next week as they head...